please pause the video and try this question first before moving on. Of course, our first step here is to draw a picture based on the given information. So we have the eight foot tall fence. We have the distance from the fence to the building set here at four feet. And then we've labeled some additional distances with some variables X, Y, and Z. Note that it is Z that we're trying to actually minimize. Since the question asks, what is the length of the shortest ladder that will reach from the ground over the fence to the wall of the building? So after drawing this picture, what we need to do is develop an equation that relates all of our variables here. So let's go ahead and do that. By first noting that we have a large triangle that we could perhaps draw separately to get a better look at. This length here would be y, this is our z. Notice that this length would be four plus x, since it comprises this entire length from the building out to the edge of the ladder. Now, of course, since we have a right angle, a good equation that would relate all of our variables would be the Pythagorean theorem, which of course is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. This would apply nicely if we assume, of course, that the hypotenuse is c, that this side here would be our a, and this side here would be our b. So we've set up the Pythagorean theorem right here. One of the problems with this, is, this equation is that it contains two variables, both y and x. So our goal will be to develop a second equation, substitute an expression so that we just have a single variable in this equation. To derive that second equation, let's look at this smaller triangle right here and redraw it. If we compare the black triangle with the orange triangle, we know that they are similar, and so we can set up a proportion between their sides. For example, we could say that y is to 8 as four plus x is to x. So let's write that proportion right here. We can very easily solve this equation for y by cross multiplying and then dividing both sides by x. Notice we have an expression for y right here that can be plugged into our original equation from earlier. And what that will do is give us an equation in terms of just one variable. So let's go ahead and do that and see what it looks like. So we've replaced y with this expression in terms of x. Notice that it is still squared. Now, since we're trying to minimize z, it might be tempting to try to solve this equation for z by square rooting both sides. It turns out that that would actually be a bad idea because later on when we did the derivative, we would have to take the derivative of the square root of this entire set of expressions here, which is kind of messy. And so we're gonna take advantage of a different idea in this case. And that idea is the following. If z squared is minimized, then it would be necessarily true that z is also minimized. So what we're gonna do is actually leave the equation in terms of z squared, and we'll try to minimize this equation. And by doing so, we'll be technically minimizing z squared, but again, if minimizing z squared is accomplished, then technically so is minimizing z. So in other words, it turns out that minimizing z squared would also allow us to minimize z and do so in a very easier way. And so the next step in order to minimize z squared is to take the derivative of both sides of this equation. The left side, we can sort of just use the notation z squared prime. That would be the derivative of the left side. It's the right side that we actually have to do some computations for. So let's walk through those. We're gonna use the chain rule and power rule essentially. So we're gonna pull down this two in the front. We will recopy the inside of the parentheses. We will subtract one from the exponent. And then, according to chain rule, we will multiply by the derivative of the inside. To understand the derivative of the inside, it might have been helpful to do a little bit of side work here. Why don't we distribute the eight into the parentheses? We'll do this on the side. Of course, doing so gives us 32 plus eight x over x. We can actually break this fraction into the sum of two separate fractions. Notice that the x's here would cancel, so we can wipe those out. We could move the x to the numerator so that it becomes 32x to the negative 1 plus 8. And now we can clearly see what the derivative will be. We use the power rule, so we pull the 1 or the negative 1 down and we get negative 32x, subtract 1 to make negative 2 for the exponent, and then the derivative of a constant is 0. So this essentially is the derivative of the inside, and that can be rewritten as negative 32 over x squared. So that's the derivative of the inside. We can put that back into the chain rule that we sort of took off from. Continuing on, we have to take the derivative of this term, again, using a power and chain rule. So we'll pull that two down in front, recopy the inside, subtract one from the exponent, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside here is easy because the constant, the derivative is zero, and the derivative of x is just a one. So we multiply by one, essentially. After taking the derivative, we have to set it equal to zero. So let's go ahead and do that. Why don't we go ahead and subtract this term on both sides of the equation so we can move it over here. 
Because a negative appears on both the left and the right side, we can cancel it. Another shortcut here is that since this is multiplication of terms here, and a 4 plus x shows up on the right and the left, we can cancel those out as well. In fact, next we can divide both sides of the equation by 2. We can clean up the right side by multiplying 8 by 32 and x by x squared. Slip a 1 under here and cross multiply. And then take the cube root of both sides. At this point, what we have is a critical number, but we have to do the first derivative test to make sure that at this critical number, the z squared function is indeed minimized. So that's our next move. The cube root of 256 is roughly 6.35, so let's choose a value that's less than 6.35 and also greater than 6.35. 4 and 8 would satisfy those conditions. What we do is we plug 4 and 8 into the first derivative. As a reminder, this was the first derivative right here, so we have to use 4 and plug it into this first derivative. Probably want to use a calculator for that. And when we do that, we see that the derivative, when plugging 4 in, is negative. It's less than 0. When we plug 8 into the derivative, we see that the derivative is greater than 0. So when the derivative is less than 0, that means the function is decreasing. When it's greater than 0, the function is increasing. Therefore, we can see right here at x equals the cube root of 256, we do have indeed a minimum value for z squared. So what we do to find the actual minimum value of z squared is we plug this into the z squared function. Let's put that back up. So go ahead, use your calculator to plug the cube root of 256 in for each x value. And when you do that, you get roughly 277.15. Remember, however, we don't want z squared. We're trying to find the minimum value of z. Here's the z in the original picture. So basically, we just have to square root both sides. And when we do that, we get the minimum value of z to be roughly 16.65. And that is indeed the correct answer.